Hey everybody, Glenn Fricker here from Spectre Sound Studios, and I want to give one of you viewers a 250 euro voucher to the greatest music store in the world, Tolman. Now, in order to win this voucher, you've got to download the drum tracks that I recorded with the crew there a few months ago. Make the best mix you possibly can and submit it, and I just might review it on my show. Submission deadlines are two weeks from the day this video premieres, so what are you doing staring at me? Download the tracks and get to it! Hi, I'm Martin from Tomen, and I uh, have the pleasure to welcome Mr. Glenn Fricker. How's it going, everybody, by the way? Um, just, it's, it's really cool to be here. It's just not cool in this room because no. the, the lighting <laughs> tech really loves to use tungsten and doesn't understand that human beings can only work within a certain operating temperature. So our shirts are just going to get just wetter and wetter and wetter as we I, go yeah. along because it's going to get awfully steamy in here. Thanks, So, <laughs> What should a drummer bring? if he wants to record Oh, drums. okay, first, first thing. Um, it really depends if he's going to be using a house kit or a studio kit. Generally, in, in my own situation, I got tired of drummers bringing in crappy drum sets, so I bought a really good kit for the studio. That way they, they can just come play on mine. Um, a drummer, if he's using a house kit, should be bringing his breakables, his snare, cymbals, pedals, that kind of thing. Uh, you want to take care and make sure that the, the pedals are in good working condition and don't squeak, so it's always good to have a can of WD-40 on hand for that, you know, so you don't get the squeak note. Same with the throne. Make sure the throne doesn't squeak. That's burned us and several times, you know, during like simple fade outs or something that the drum will lose. Like, oh, come on. You know, simple, certain things like that. Symbols that aren't cracked or broken, you know, that actually sound good, that kind of thing. You know, it's a lot of common sense stuff. If, um, you know, and if you're bringing your kit, you want to basically make sure there aren't any divots in the skins, that they've been replaced decently or do recently. You, do you prefer certain hats or certain tensions? Or do you, is that is stuff you... Uh, for, for like rock and metal, you know, uh, Remo Emperor Clears, I'm working with Aquarians right now. I'm using their double ply clears, which are outstanding. Um, I'm using an Aquarian, I think, Force 10 snare head, which is just killer. And uh, same with the kick drum skin. It's like a double ply clear. It's just great. I really love the Aquarian stuff. I've been working with them for about, I don't know, about three years now. And they, they, they've been really good. And um, we got to shoot out a whole bunch of different yeah, types yeah, of skins. Yeah, and for okay. the rock and metal stuff, yeah, they're just great. Okay. And just for record, we're using uh, clear heads here. And there are clear heads from Remo on the toms. And uh, it's a fabric head from DW, but it's clear anyway. And we had a coated ambassador Remo on the snare drum. And you can't go wrong with that. Yes. Pretty much any genre, an ambassador is going to do a good job. Snare drum, you know, we're doing pretty typical here. Uh, SM57, we got this marked, you know, we've got this mounted. We'll get a close-up of it at some point. Um, and, uh, you know, that that's standard. And uh, down below here, if we want to get the de detail on the bottom snare mic, this is kind of neat. We were hanging out, I was hanging out at Cameron Webb's place in LA a few weeks back, and he was showing how he did this, and I wanted to give this a shot today, is to move the snare mic, bottom snare mic, way down close to the floor and get more of a, of an overall picture of the bottom snare instead of close up and get that really papery sound. So let's get more, get more of the drum this way mm -hmm. as opposed to just very, very thin sounding. So I'm really looking forward to try that out. The great thing about having the snare mic, the bottom snare mic down that far is you don't have to worry about phase because it's out of the rule mm. of thirds, you know, the three to one thing. It's, mm. it's past that, so it's good. Okay, what do we have on the toms? Okay, uh, yeah. we were originally going to go with 421s and we kind of ran out of uh, MD 421s. We got one over on the floor tom there. That's pretty much the standard tom mic. I'm really digging the Lewitts these days for those. Uh, I think they're the 640 DTs, DTs. I don't know. I can never remember the damn codes. Sorry, Lewitt. You guys make incredible. Uh, you guys make incredible drum mics. Well, we've got the Audix D2s because I was kind of yeah. digging the clamps. These are pretty neat. And like I said, on the floor tom, we got the 421s. Um, we have a bass micro? Yeah, yes, of course. We've got the Audix D6. Again, you can't go wrong really, with that. A really classic microphone. Yep, it's, it's been a mainstay in my studio for about 10 years until I discovered the Lewitt stuff. And I'm using like the 640 Rex for that, and that's like the dual, um, the dual diaphragm. It's got a um, condenser and a dynamic element in perfect phase, and you use like a special breakout cable for it. It's really cool. The only thing I'm missing here that I would really like is something called a Solomon Low Freak, and I use that all the time in my studio. That's for picking up subharmonics on the kick drum, and it just, you know, it's if you got a subwoofer mm. or something, that just really moves a lot of bass. Yes. 
Then yeah, yeah. we have overheads. And yeah, of course on the overheads, we've got the Neumann KM 184s. You just can't go wrong with these. And you see these seem to be configured in a really weird position. If we want to follow this, I'll explain what's going on here. And this is, you know, because uh, Martin was asking me about this, why, the, why the, uh, the overheads are the position that they are. And what we're doing here is we're bisecting the kit. And our stereo field center is down this angle here. So the kick and the snare and the hat are all in the center of the st stereo field. So we move the one mic out here and then this mic out here. We pick, still pick everything up, but the snare is now in the center of the stereo field. So we don't have to worry about it dropping, you know, going to one side or pulling to one side as it were. And um, yeah. just to make things really cool, we go down here in the bottom corner. We've got a pair of Rode NTRs in the back corners. And those are going to be our room mics. We've got these very low, so we pick up just a lot of the drum. Hopefully, hopefully we don't get too much cymbal. We can compress the loving crap out of these and uh, get a lot of reflections. They're not, th these are figure eight mics, so let's point at one wall here, one wall here. So we're going to get more of the reflection and not the direct sound of the kit. That's what, that's what we're hoping for. Exactly. Hopefully that works what out. I, what I miss uh, due to, oh, instead of my normal recording routine, is... Uh, I don't know what. You got a, a microphone? Oh, no. <laughs> a microphone over the hi hat. Yeah, not needed in rock. A lot of guys will mic the hat. I'm like, unless the guy's really, really, really soft on the hats, I won't even bother. Because okay. we're doing rock and not disco. Yes. Disco was very, don't very, disco. you know, disco was, had a lot of hi hat and yeah. hard rock and metal really don't. I've, I've had arguments with other engineers about it. And I've had, you know, one guy mix my stuff said, well, where's the hi hat mic? I'm like, you don't need it. Well, you're going to do this. Just pull up the mics, it'll sound yeah. fine. Let's hear the drummer. Yeah. You know? Okay. That's the thing. So um, first and foremost, I want to say I want to talk about kind of like the importance of the room mics. Let's do let's do two beats here. Let's show what the what the close mics sound like. Play me a beat. We're just going to use the close mics on this one. Okay. Now we're just gonna we're gonna mute out the, the close mics. We're gonna bring up just the room mics. Check this out. And together, we get a bigger sound. All right, cool. Martin here really likes his hi-hat a little lower. Normally, I'll get the get the drum and bring up the hi-hat a little more. You have seem to have a little bit of finesse, mm -hmm. which a lot of metal smashers don't. Don't they'll just, uh, yeah, they'll yeah, just yeah, beat will, the living crap out of the hat. Okay, I will beat Ge a little bit. Generally, more. this yep. is the loudest element on the kit, and okay. it's kind of like the enemy of the snare mic. Yeah. So well, I'll we, try and separate yeah. those as no, physically we, as I can. I can do it right now. And um, oh, I'm, oh, okay. We can try that. See what happens. And I will play a little. See bit. what happens if we move? Yeah, move that up. And. Well, let's do. Um, let's show them the difference between skin and rim shot yes. on the snare too. This is really important. Now, I'm always screaming at drummers. You know, rim shot, rim shot, rim shot. And a lot of guys are like, "Well, I play blast beats. Well, so what? Learn how to play them louder." Here's the reason why. Let's do a beat with just the skin. Okay, so that's just a skin. Let's try the same thing with, with uh, rim shots on the snare. And so what, what happens here, and this is, this is really important, is the snare is about two to three times louder, yes. for starters. It gets a wonderful attack, but because that snare is louder, we don't need to put as much gain on that snare mic, and that turns the hi-hat down. Yep. by way of comparison, so we can get away with a lot more. So it's like, even though all these elements are together, this thing here is the enemy. And we want to keep that out of that mic. 
so we can get more of that snare. Right now, if I, yeah, if we talk about the snare drum, um, Glenn did something interesting well, for me as a drummer as well um, in the beginning, and he uh, take one of the moon jails, which is uh, normally like this size or like this one. Yeah, you maybe all know. And he cut it in half, and he cut it again in half, and he cut it again in half, so it turns out it were four little four little pieces. Yeah. Pieces. So, what is the secret okay. behind? This. Okay, when you hit a drum, it's like dropping, uh, dropping a pebble into a, into a, into a, into a little pool. Yeah. And you'll get waves yeah. come back in and, and out. And that's where the, your ring is. So what happens is we put the moon gel here, it will just break that wave up a little bit. But if you put it in four spots, okay. it's going to kill the wave, if I may. Yeah, of course. Thank you, sir. And so yeah, we've got a nice, solid, very dry thwack. If we pull these off, we're gonna get a ring now. It just goes on and on and on, on and on. Yeah. So if we put one, we still get it's a two, lot ring is. of ring. We, we put two, it still goes on, but three and four, put a four right there. And that's just gonna, gone. It's or gone. almost completely gone. You can EQ the, you can use a very narrow band parametric EQ to take out one of the remains. And that, that's easy to find if you got, a, got an EQ like one, the one with Reaper with the built-in frequency display. You can kind of see exactly where that is. That's the fundamental frequency. You just want to notch that out a little bit and then boost up the bottom end or whatnot. But this is a beautiful sounding drum yes. first and foremost. Yep. It really is. I, I, love the, I love the attack on this. Um, so, yeah, like I said, what this does is just basically breaks up that wave coming back. So you get a, just a nice... Poof, and it's just very dry and it's wonderful recording. The reason you don't, you'll use tiny bits of moon gel like this instead of four pieces of moon gel, four whole moon gels, mm -hmm. is because when you put this stuff on, you're changing the weight of the head. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna, yep. we wanna mess with that as little as possible. And by not loading up the head too much, we're still leaving a lot of top end so we don't have to add more EQ. Because when you turn up the treble on this, you're turning up the hi-hat as well. Yeah. So everything kind of works together. It all has to do with the technique, how the drum is tuned, and the muting you're using to get that nice, crisp, and clear sound. Yeah. That, so that, that's why we do that. And that's a really neat trick. I just learned that a few weeks ago. Even after recording drums for 20 years, I was like, hey, that sounds like a good idea. Try it yeah. out, and it's great. Yeah. I mean, there's some other neat ideas you can do, like the mass off tuning, where you like, you know, tune down to a ripple yes. on one side, and that works really well, but it's, it gives a very attacky sound. And unless you've got like cast, you know, cast zinc hoops, you could really damage your, your, your drum as well. So you have to be very careful with that. The other thing I, I got to note is um, the kick drum, how we have this tuned. If you, you want to hit the kick for a minute. So we've got the kick tuned down about as low as it'll go. And I've been doing this for ages and I was, like I said, hanging out with Cameron Webb and it turns out he tunes his kick drum the exact same way. Basically everything's just finger tight and that, that skin's just about mm -hmm. falling off. And you see we've got what's called a flam slam pad on there. Yep. That's a little Kevlar pad, and that gives yep. us a lot more attack. Attack, yes. Yep. And we've turned the, turned the beater around as well. We're using a hard beater. So that's just a much, much more bite into the sound. And for you know a dense mix, like with a lot of guitars and, and bass, and very deep bass, you're going to want to be able to break through that, and yep. that's where you get the top end. Yep, yep. So you, you'll see a lot of like, you know, um, you know, double pedals designed for guys who do you know, a, lot of, a lot of double kick work and they'll have plastic or rubber beaters. Rubber beaters, yes. And just, just much more attack. And like Danmar even makes like a metal yeah. kick pad. Yeah. Yeah. I've used those yeah. before and they're pretty cool. Yeah.
right, so there you go. So that's just a basic drum primer, believe me. It's not something you, you learn how to record overnight. It takes a lot of practice because there's a lot of factors to know. But generally, start with a great kit. Yep. Of course, we got a DW kit. It sounds pretty awesome. Use fresh heads whenever possible. And change your bottom skins out every now and then, too. These are still the factory, but this has been, hasn't been used that much. But generally, you should change your bottom skins out about once a year if you're playing a lot. Yeah, yeah. And, and they'll, they'll just really bring your drums back to life. And if your heads are worn, if they're divoted, get rid of them, put new ones on. That's what we did here. Uh, the snare, top snare head was in, we're still in really good shape, so we wound up using that. But I gotta say, I'm really impressed with these, uh, these Zoltan cymbals. These are available at Toman. Yes. These, these are the Toman brand, correct? Yes. It's an own brand of us. Uh, you will find the yeah, related Links below in the comment, no, yeah. in the article. Really impressed section. with the crash. Check out that ride one more time. Yeah. That thing's really cool. Not bad. Pretty damn cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty impressed. Okay. <laughs> no, we do it. Thank you for being here. Uh, Thanks for having me. It's been it's been a great great experience. I was gonna say, uh, if you guys want to take a crack at learning how to mix real drums, these guys are gonna make the tracks available for download. Yes. There'll be some links in the description yes. below. You can check those out and try to mix them yourself. Should be pretty cool. Yes. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button here down here. And if you have any questions, write us an email, leave us a comment. Thumbs up. And see you soon. Bye.